Um, so actually today I want to start talking about something completely different um, on in the general theme of non-regular languages we have one example so far that we've discussed of a non-regular languages of a non-regular language non-regular languages this is what we're going to be talking about for the next few times um, the classic example is a to the n b to the n this is not regular A to the N, B to the N. You cannot make a DFA or a NFA or a regular expression which gives you this language, A to the N, B to the N. I don't know if this, uh, if you remember what we talked about this. What about, what about a regular expression? What about A star, B star? Doesn't that do it? Um, actually, that's not quite the same. Can anybody say what's the difference? Yeah. You could technically like get B or like A, B from that. Probably. Uh, a, A, B, you said? Oh, from the below. One. Yeah, right. The, yeah. the regular expression does not require those two exponents to match. And the, the, the set that I'm talking about, a to the n, b to the n, is when those two exponents are the same. They are required to be the same. So it could be, well, it could be the empty string, or it could be a, b, or it could be a, a, b, b, or you, you get the idea. Whereas this regular expression, this gets you like too much, right? This actually makes... Um, more like a to the n, b to the m, right? That, that one is regular. You can easily make an NFA or a DFA for that. So this one is regular. But the first one is not. Now, um, it's very difficult, though, to demonstrate that something is not regular. We actually proved the first one was not regular. I don't know if you remember, the, the proof was not terribly, um, not terribly nice. And it was very much a handmade proof just for that particular example. What I want to talk about over the next few times is a general method which you can basically use for any example. I mean, it, sometimes it's going to be really hard, and, but uh, this is a general method which more or less works all the time to show a language is not regular. And actually, if you try to do it on that example uh, up top there, it's actually fairly easy to do. Um, and you can also do it for many, many other examples. So a general method to show that a language is not regular. This involves, um, actually we're, we're going to talk about it all, all today, but we're not going to get to the punchline. It involves sort of a, a weird kind of uh, idea, which also has a, um, to, to me, weird name. It's named after a person. Um, and I will spell it before I say it. This is a Polish name which looks like Berzozowski. It's, it's pronounced, um, in, in Polish, the R-Z sounds like uh, S-H, sh. So this, and the W sounds like a V. So it's something like Brzozowski, something like that. Any, any Polish speakers out there? Yeah, was that okay? Yeah. Yeah? All right, how would you say it? Yeah, it's a little. Did I leave out one of the Zos? Yeah. I'm just going to say, so this is the name. It's the, uh, yeah, this is typically by Americans pronounced Brzezowski, I think. Um, anyway. I typed it into uh, Google once. And like you can, you can search for, there are, there are like automated sites which will pronounce words for you. And it said in a very enthusiastic, it was kind of like the, um, the enthusiastic uh, TikTok lady voice. It said, Berzozowski, <laughs> which is not how you're, not how to say it. Um, anyway, the Brzozowski derivative. Um, it's called the derivative. It's, it's really got nothing to do with the derivative from calculus, but um, actually there, there is some vague, uh, it has some vague resemblance to the derivative from calculus, although uh, that word is, um, it's a stretch, to be honest, in my opinion. Um, anyway, uh, this derivative actually you can use to show that a language is not regular. And the derivative comes from asking a somewhat weird question, and that is that, um, so in a DFA, here's the question. If we move the starting state, uh, how does this affect the language?
Did I use the wrong effect? Affect? I don't know. How does that change the language of the DFA? If you, you keep the whole diagram the same, but you just move the starting state from one spot to another. Here is an example. So here's a DFA. I'll call this one M. Um, this is going to look a little complicated, but actually it's, it's very simple DFA. Uh, what I want is, oops. So what, what is going to be accepted here is basically A followed by three Bs or six Bs or something like that. In order to be accepted, you need to start with an A and then followed by a multiple of three Bs. Now, as written, that's, a, that's not a DFA. Everything else I want to fail. And so I'm going to draw arrows from everywhere down to a failure state, which makes it look much more complicated. But actually, it's... It's a simple idea, though. The only strings which are acceptable are things that start with A, followed by some multiple of three Bs, all right? So as a regular expression, this language is something like A, B, B, B star, right? Or, or just as a set, maybe a little clearer, it's A, B to the three N. Or you could, this is equivalent, A, B cubed to the N, right? However, however you want to say that. That's the language of this DFA. Everything else is rejected. Sorry, all those arrows, I never labeled those arrows. They, they should be, like each of these arrows has to be labeled by the one that that one was not. So if, if this is an A, you go here, but if it's a B, you fail. So that's a B, this one is an A, this one is an A, this one is an A, right? Each of those arrows is what you, what happens if you don't do the, the thing that I wrote at the top. All right, so this is the DFA M. Now, what I want to ask, and this, there's no good reason why this would seem interesting, but it turns out to be super useful. What if I moved the starting state instead of starting here? Let's say move it to here, this accepting state. So what if we move the, accepting, or the starting state, but leave everything else the same? Move the starting state. And I want to ask, I have to draw this uh, diagram again, sorry. Well, I can copy and paste easily. All y'alls on paper, my apologies. All right, what if I move the starting state so that now it starts here? Otherwise, I'm leaving the same diagram uh, could anybody say what um, what is the language of this machine now? It used to be so I'm going to call this one N, right? Remember the language of M was the the original one. Uh, the language of M was A. I'll write it this way: B cubed to the N. Can anybody say what's the language of this one now? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the b cubed part, right? B, b cubed to the n. Um, actually, that original, you know, in the original machine, you had to start with an a and then do this b stuff. But now that I moved the starting state, you no longer have to do that a at the beginning. You just have to do the b stuff. So this time, the language of n is actually b cubed to the n, right? Without that a, that's the difference. Um, all of the words in the original language, all the strings in the original language had to start with A, right? But in this language now, they no longer have to start with that A. You could say here, so I, I would like to make some kind of general statement. Notice um, where the original starting state was, was here, right? And I moved the starting state through an A arrow. What is the effect on the language? Basically, if you move the starting state through an A arrow, it basically removes an A from the beginning of all the strings in the language. Because it used to be that you had to do this A, but now no longer. You do not have to do that first A anymore. And so what it means is, if you look at sort of how did this language change to go from here to here, since I moved through an A, the effect of this was to delete this A at the beginning of every string in the language. All right, so I'm going to try and write that down. What happened here was, Moving the start state 
through the letter A, through a, uh, let me say, through an arrow <coughs> labeled A causes initial A's to be deleted from the language. All right. It used to be you had to start with the A and then do the B thing, but since I moved the starting state, now you don't have to do that A anymore. So the language consists of strings which only have the, B, the, B, the B's part, not including the A's part. All right. Here's a, uh, if I were to say this in, in more generic terms, um, in general, moving the start state changes the front of all the strings in the language. Right? Specifically, it deletes letters from the beginning of the strings of the language if you move the starting state through an arrow. All right? It changes the front of all strings in the language. Uh, could we think instead about what would happen in this same example if I moved it somewhere else? So how about in this, uh, in this first case, I moved it through this A arrow. What if instead I moved it through this B arrow? What would the effect be then? Well, going by the same reasoning, the effect ought to be you remove B's from the beginning of all of the strings in the original language. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and copy and paste this picture again. Sorry for those of you who <coughs> can't do this as easily as me. Not everybody is as good as me. Um, what if instead, this time, I'm going to move the starting state to down here, all right? Remember, it, it used to be there. What if we move it to here now? If you think about sort of like where we moved it, where it used to be, I moved it through a B arrow this time. So this was moving through a B arrow should delete initial Bs from the language. All right. Uh, I will call this one, the first one was M, then N. How about P? I don't like O. Mathematicians don't like using capital O as a variable because it looks like a zero. Um, so what is the language of P now? Remember what it used to be? The language of the original machine was A, B to the, B to the 3N or B cubed to the N. The idea now is, what if I start with strings like this and delete initial Bs? That is, you remove a B at the beginning of each of those strings. Well, actually, there are no Bs at the beginning of any of these strings, right? These strings don't begin with Bs at all. And so when I say remove Bs from the beginning of these strings, I mean, what am I supposed to do? If there are no Bs, it turns out what happens is you just get rid of those strings entirely. So this language becomes the empty set because there are no strings here which you could even remove a B at the beginning from. All right, And the result is this becomes the empty set. And actually, if you look at the diagram, I think it's, it's kind of obvious that really the language of this DFA is the empty set. This is a, um, if you're going to start here, this is a very stupid DFA because all you ever do is stay here. right? You can't, you can't possibly visit the rest of the diagram. All right, and so moving through the B arrow should delete initial Bs from the language. And I will just say, there were no strings beginning with B so we end up with nothing. All right. So there's actually an operation here when it comes to these languages. There is an operation that you can do on this language which will 
remove the A from the beginning of all the strings, or remove the B from the beginning of all the strings. And if there were no strings with Bs on them, you just get rid of them entirely. And this is, this is what the derivative is. This is called the derivative. So I will write down um, the definitions here of what the derivative means. So when I say something like remove the initial A's, this really looks like, if you're writing this sort of formalistically here, it looks like this. It's all x such that ax is in the language that we started with. This is, technically speaking, what you're doing when you are removing the initial a's from a language. It means you consider all of these strings in the original language which started with an a, but then you create the set only of the rest of that string, all right? You ignore the A, and this is the set which consists of all the rest of it without that A at the beginning, all right? So the effect is this removes the A from anything which started with A. and then discards entirely anything uh, which didn't start with A. I'll say which doesn't start with A. All right, it removes the A from the beginning of anything which started with A, and it discards anything which doesn't start with A. That's because over here, just to begin with, I am only considering strings that look like A followed by some other stuff. So if there were any strings that started with B, they're just totally ignored here. All right. Uh, this set here, this is called, this is the Jozowski derivative with respect to A. All right, so this is kind of like a partial derivative. You can do the derivative with respect to A, or you can do the derivative with respect to B, or whatever other letter. If you don't know what the partial derivative is, it doesn't matter. Um, that's the only time I'm ever going to say that. Uh, but this is the derivative with respect to A. It is removing A's from the beginning of uh, strings. And we write it like, this is written like this. You write it like a derivative. Derivative with respect to A, D, D, A of L of M. This means you get rid of A's at the beginning of uh, strings, all right? Any thoughts about this? Uh, why is this called the derivative? It's vaguely like the derivative. It's, it's actually vaguely like the partial derivative in the sense that if you do something like um, derivative with respect to A of A, what would that be? You just take that string and you remove the A from the beginning, what, what would you end up with? Yeah? Yeah, this would be the empty, I would say the empty string. Surely you meant the empty string. Uh, the, uh, whereas, what is the derivative with respect to A uh, of B? This actually is more like the empty set. It's nothing, right? Um, because, like I said, when you do the derivative, it discards, really I, have, I should be, Sorry, the derivative is something you do to a set, and you get a set as the answer. So technically, they, these should all be sets. And this really is the empty set. Um, this is similar to the partial derivative. The rules for the partial derivative, remember, if you, I mean, if you do remember. If you don't know about the partial derivative, that's totally fine. But these are like basic rules about how the partial derivative works. Uh, if you have sort of the same variable here, you get one, and if you have different variables, you get zero. This is similar to this over here. If you think of the empty string as representing somehow something like the number one, the empty string is like uh, a um, it's like an identity element for concatenation of strings because x concatenated with the empty string equals x, uh, whereas this uh, the empty set is more like a zero element. So this is sort of the vague analogy, and there is some, something vaguely like the product rule for the Brzezowski derivative, which uh, I don't think we're going to want to talk about. But anyway, this is, I'm just trying to say, why it's called the derivative. Any, uh, none of that really matters, though, if you don't care. Um, what the derivative is really matters. So in our examples that we've talked about so far, so for instance, derivative with respect to A of 
this language, a, b, cubed to the n, this is just the language b cubed to the n, right? Derivative with respect to a just kills the a at the beginning of those strings and leaves uh, the rest of it. But the derivative with respect to b of that string, this would be the empty set. It kills b's at the beginning of those strings, and if they don't have b's at their beginning, it just kills the whole string, and you end up with nothing else. All right, these are the two derivatives of that set. All right, uh, we can also do derivatives. Really, it doesn't have to be a single letter down there in the derivative, derivative with respect to A or with respect to B. You can even do something like, or you could do something like the derivative with respect to AB, dab. This is a little weird, but uh, I'm sure we can handle it. What does that mean? That means you take all the strings and you cancel out a A and a B at the beginning of each of those strings. Uh, and if they don't begin with A, B, then you just uh, throw them away entirely. Now these strings, I think, uh, they do begin with A and then a B, right? Um, so what are you left with? If you start with that set, you cancel out the A at the beginning and then also cancel out one B. Anybody want to say? Yeah. Yeah, this is a little weird, but yeah, I would write it like b squared, or he said b, b, which is fine, like this. Just looking at it, if you don't think too hard about it, it looks like the strings just got longer, but they didn't actually. Um, what happened was you delete the a at the beginning, and then you delete the first of the b's, and what remains is two more b's followed by some more of these uh, B's taken in groups of three. All right. Yeah. Would you have to do an F, uh, like an epsilon or B squared just because there'd be no B's? Yeah. What if there were no B's at the at the beginning of these words to begin with? You mean like if like if it accepts A, right? Like that language initially accepts just A. Just A. That's right. So but then, once you take this derivative, just A is discarded because just A does not begin with A B. Okay, so you don't have to like, address the B or MB? That's right. Yeah, this, this language here does not, does not include B or the empty string. Yeah. This is a good question. It doesn't include the empty string because this language originally did not include AB. To get the empty string, you would cancel the A and the B, but uh, that wasn't in here. Yeah, great. Okay, or I could do what is a derivative with respect to BA. This means you look at all these words, you cancel out B A on the beginning, and if the if sorry I said sometimes I say words instead of strings, instead of uh, um, you look at all these strings, you cancel out B A's at the beginning, and if they didn't have B A's, you just throw them away entirely. What uh, what do you end up with? Yeah. Yeah, you end up with nothing. This is because none of those strings begin with BA. And so when you take the derivative with respect to BA, it just gets rid of uh, everything. So this is empty set. That's because none of these begin with BA. All right. This is how we do the derivative. So in general here, like I said, the, the thing down here doesn't have to be a single letter. It can actually be any string. You can put any string down here. You could even use the empty string, although d, d, the empty string, doesn't change it. That means you just remove the empty string from the beginning of all the strings, and they, they all just stay the same. So that's a useless derivative, but it, it is uh, allowed. So here's the real sort of final definition for any string x and any language L, the derivative with respect to x of L, the definition is this is all y such that xy is in L. All right? It means you find, so you start by find all the strings in your original language which actually start with x, 
And then the answer of the derivative is just the rest of them, just the y part. All right? You look up all the strings which do begin with x, and then you give me just the y part. This is the derivative. All right, so this, I mean, you should, you should memorize this definition, I suppose, although we're not usually going to write it that way. You should just you should remember what it means, how to do it. Um, you can play some, how about some, some cute little derivative games with the English language? So let's let E be the set of um, real English words. Um, what is this? E is the set of all English words. You could think of like my giant list of words file that I was using the other day. Um, what is the set the derivative with respect to A of E? Can anybody give me an example of something which is in this set? Remember what the derivative means is you find all the, all the strings which began with E, uh, with A, and then you remove that A. And then what, whatever's left over is what you get in this set. So this contains... Can anybody give me a string which is in this set? Got an idea? Yeah, P P L E. Uh huh. That actually was my first example there. Why is that in the set? Because A P P L E is is in the original set E. Remember, so the derivative set means you find all of the original words which started with A, and then you take the A away, and you just give me what's left over. Yeah. Um, for words like aardvark. Uh -huh. Would you have to remove, you'd only remove one A, or would you have to remove both? Yeah, only one A. So ard, aardvark with one A is in this derivative set. Yeah. If you wanted to remove both of them, then that would be, you know, derivative with respect to A squared. That would take off both of them. Uh, I don't know if there, are there other English words which also begin with two A's? Maybe. My file had a, ah, ah, a, -H, oh, yeah. and odd, the past tense of the verb to a. Ah. Um, yeah, so this would also in include words like advertisement or um, artistic without the A. All right, these are words which used to begin with the A, but you took the A away. That's what the derivative means. Um, you could do something like, I looked this up in my, in my giant list of words, D, D, bop of E. Actually, this is, uh, in my word list, I looked up all, uh, all the possible results here. What I got was P-E-D. That's because bop is a word with two, two P's, right? What this, what this means, remember, is you find all the English words which begin with B-O-P, then you remove that and just give me what's left over. Um, also, I got per, bopper, of course, boppers is a word. Bopping is a word, so I got that. And then I got S, because bops is a word. And then I also got the empty string. That's because bop by itself is already a word in the list. And when you delete BOP from the beginning of BOP, what remains is the empty string. All right? That's the full list, in my opinion, of uh, all the words in that derivative set. Okay. And it looks like time is done. Sorry to end on my, uh, my silly examples. Maybe that's a good place to end. Next time we're going to talk about what, what does this even have to do with regular languages. It turns out to be very 